Okay. Sorry about that. I'm back live again. I'm sure people will come back on. I copied all of your comments from the last one. I'm going to answer them here. And I was able to pour some new new tea. So, uh, or not tea, but hot water. Uh, and I'm getting a lot of messages here on my WeChat about the situation. Again, when you stream from China, it is very difficult to maintain a constant connection. So I apologize for that. So this isn't the first time this has happened. I've had to reset my my live stream multiple times in the past. Um, this will be part two. And then uh, if it happens again, I might even have to do a part three. So I appreciate everyone's patience with it. It's, it's not easy to live stream from China. Well, going back here, let's see a couple of you. Um, John, my friend uh, John says, one of my brothers that lives near Seattle thinks this is just fake news. I told him weeks back what to expect. You're going to find the fake news people out there in every country. Uh, uh, I think even my president was that way for a long, long time until just recently, and he's kind of come back on board. Ahmed Razi, China secured a decisive victory. Europe and USA are now in deep trouble. It's not... Ahmad, it's not a victory yet, okay? There's still lots of restrictions out there. I still am required to wear a, road, uh, a face mask when I go out. I'm only allowed off the campus once every every uh, two days for a couple of hours. I'm still under restriction. And I'm the only one in this city that's like that, by the way, but only because I live on a college campus. But... Uh, when you go to the malls, you go to the restaurants, nobody's there. I went out to dinner a couple nights ago, and I was the only one in the restaurant. It, it, nobody's going out. Nobody's buying Nikes. Nobody's shopping. And many people haven't even been gotten paid. Um, a lot of people have lost their jobs and lost their businesses, and so they're still trying to figure out what they're going to do next. It's not a victory yet. We're still in the trenches here, guys. It, um, you'll hear some people declaring victory, but I think that's a little premature. Uh, the movie theaters and bars and all entertainment venues, and they just canceled Qingming holiday stuff. You know, the, the, the festivities that go along with Qingming, they canceled it now. So it's not a decisive victory. We're in the trenches just like everybody else. We're looking a lot better than we were in China. We're looking a lot better than we were a couple of, of weeks ago. We've got a long, long, long way to go. Europe and USA are just, I think USA is just discovering how bad it really is there. I think it's i think it's a lot worse than most people think. Again, that's no reason to panic. There's no reason to go crazy and go out and buy tons of toilet paper. That's stupid to me. You know, just go live your life. Just be aware. Awareness is the important thing, not fear and panic. And uh, the same thing in Europe. <sighs> I don't want to talk about the CCP anymore, guys. It's it's not worth it. Uh, I was uh, out yesterday, saw people spitting and clearing their nose, just like they did before the virus. Yeah, it depends on where you're at. <laughs> if you if you go to the countryside, you see that a hell of a lot more. I see people spit. You can hear it. You don't even have to see it. You can just hear it behind you. So that's still happening. And that sort of thing happens in every country, not just in China. You know, just... Just go running in the park in America and you see, see people spitting all over the place. Do well. I think China is blaming on America. Just quick resorts against America's blaming game. Yeah. Everyone's blaming each other. It's stupid. Pandemic may believe started on Kansas. <laughs> Haven't heard that one yet. True. It's on Wiki. Yeah, because everything on Wikipedia is true, right? <laughs> Flu started in chicken farm in USA. <laughs> That NBA player, Rudy, touched his mics, making me laugh. <laughs> Stupid. I was shocked. I will say this. I was absolutely shocked that they canceled the NBA and canceled baseball and the NHL. This, the, not canceled, but suspended the seasons. I'm absolutely – I did not expect that to happen at all. I, I'm on the record saying that would never happen in America, and it happened, and I'm – Blown away. I cannot believe it. <laughs> you know, the debate will be how much of a reaction is is uh, is needed. 
I believe many possible more restrictions coming in parts of the U.S. and not just suggesting. Maybe. I mean, the only way that they can quarantine an entire city is declaring martial law. I don't think they would do that for this. There's a lot of dismissive attitude in the U.S. in my circles and area. Yeah, you're going to see that a lot. Um, it depends on what you claim. A lot of people have told me that I am being dismissive. And I think people misunderstand me. Uh, I'm not being dismissive of it. I'm just... I... I throw up my arms and say that's life you know <laughs> it's you know it's like when your dog dies yeah it's sad but that's life it it's people this is how we do this is this is life guys you know you can either lock yourself in a in a bunker for the next 10 years because you're afraid it by the <laughs> dr john campbell had a great stat i want to point it out it was very interesting, uh, and he's a he's a very um, uh, big proponent in isolation and governments doing everything they can to stop this this virus. So, you know, I I don't agree with the extent that he wants to take it to, but he is a doctor, and I'm just an English teacher vlogger. So, you know, take that <laughs> for a grain of salt. Um, he said, okay, with well, a couple, he put the numbers out, you know, and. Everyone's looking at the cumulative number, but look at the people who are currently right now, you know, identified as currently having it. My, you know, not the people who have had it in the past, but currently have it, right? And then the percentage, break it down like that. And he broke it down. This was like two days ago. And he broke it down to like there was currently about 5,000 people worldwide that are currently in the hospital. Um, various stages, uh, you know, some are critical, some are just being observed, like, Tom Hanks and Rita Rudner are in the hospital, but they're fine. They're stable. They're doing okay, right? So, but so you can count all those people. And uh, he made the comment that this could strain the 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 medical you call it, the medical industry, I guess, uh, uh, in many countries. And he's got a point there. You know, so you, you need to do the social distancing to spread the virus out over time, so that people can. So the medical community can handle it. And that makes sense. But all of this is happening. Everything that you're seeing, the cancellation of the sporting events, um, businesses being shut down, businesses being closed completely, you know, trillions and trillions of dollars being taken out of value market, uh, uh, market valuations uh, because about 5,000 people worldwide are currently in the hospital. Again, I'm not discounting those people who are sick, and I'm not discounting the seriousness of the disease. I simply try to put it in perspective. Okay, I have a heart. I'm a human being, people. All right. So, I picked up Chinese for family a couple of days back, but I'm not sure if I would take family out to eat in a restaurant at this time. I don't see why not. Go eat in a restaurant. You know, go go enjoy Chinese food. It's it's no different than eating at McDonald's. You know. What do you think uh, Chinese leaders saying about the virus started in America? I think it's stupid, but the, they're they're being emotionally reactive to what American leaders are, have been saying this whole time, you know, uh, uh, about China blaming China, you know, the whole thing on Fox News and stuff like that. It, it's it's so stupid and and ignorant and yeah. Uh, can't strain the U.S. hospitals. People don't have health care. <laughs> That's another thing. It's very interesting that we were talking about this last night with my friends, the timing of this and the election coming up in November and the big push for Medicare for all, which I'm a fan of. I'm not a fan of eliminating private health care, but having a public option makes sense to me. So, uh, you know, with it, it is going to be a problem. And then they had to track backtrack the statements from the president and verify, okay, Testing would be covered for, by the federal government, but treatment would not. And remember, even if you have health insurance out there, you're still paying a ton of money for, for your health insurance and for your co-pays and your deductibles. Um, not your choice, what plan you want based on what you can afford. And if you can't afford anything, you're kind of shit out of luck, right? 
Uh, he's already said blaming game is stupid. And he doesn't want to talk about it. Thank you. I, I, I don't. I'm over it. Johnson, uh, no, the Chinese said that is quick resorts against America's blaming game. Okay, one more thing. Uh, people have been talking about the bunch of xenophobia and people treating Westerners or foreigners in China differently uh, recently because they see foreigners as people bringing the virus into the country. I've heard a lot of talk about this. I personally have not experienced it at all. I've remained in China this whole time. I have not left. Um, and uh, I'm very proud. I made happy. I made that decision because if I had left, if I tried to come back now, I would be put in a 14 day quarantine because that's, and so even if you're coming from America, you will be put in a 14 day quarantine. Um, I, I'm not, it, I don't know if that's in a hotel or who pays for it. I, I don't know those details. I just read the blurb and, um, my experience walking around this town is that people don't treat me any different than they have this whole time, which is very friendly. Like, you know, when I was at the, the morning tea yesterday morning, it was afternoon, but you know, like brunch. And I, I made a comment that the, you know, the tables were all further apart than usual. There was a lot of separation there were a lot fewer people there than usual. And, you know, you get up to go use the restroom or when you walk in, Everyone stares at me because I'm the only foreigner there. But that's no different than it is usually. Everyone always stares at me everywhere I go because I am look differently. Then it's normal part of life if you're a foreigner. If you live in Shanghai or Beijing or even Shenzhen, Guangzhou, life might be different. But I'm talking about in everyone's experience will be different depending on where you live. But in my town here, which has always been very foreigner friendly, uh, people have treated me with kindness and respect, just like they always do. So I have not experienced any kind of uh, disc disc discriminatory behavior. They haven't um, blamed me. I've seen a lot of links to news articles and things like this on WeChat, but um, no one pointed at me and said, it's your fault, you know, get the hell out of my country. How dare you? No one's done anything like that to me. And, People still wave at me. Children still say hello, you know, and people treat me like I'm a normal, just like anyone else here. Mm. Oh, John, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I apologize then. <laughs> My family's never really eaten at McDonald's. Okay. I... I eat at McDonald's sometimes still. Uh, I'm for the public option and regulation of big pharma prices. Sure, I am too. Uh, be, be vegan. It's time for you to stop watching anything from NTD. I don't know what, what's NTD, Michael. I don't... Oh, you're talking about... Okay. You guys are having your own conversation in the chat group. Okay, I see. <laughs> Yeah, I watched the ADV guys, Winston and Sea uh, Milk. I watched them too. I've watched them for years. I don't agree with everything they say. Winston had a pretty good stream today, where there were some things I did not like in the stream. But I thought, like the naming thing, I thought that was kind of stupid. But um, he said a lot of things that made a lot of sense today. They don't live in China anymore. They live in they live in California. Okay, let's talk about um, uh, teaching. I am not working. I am not teaching. Uh, I still got my full salary from the college, but you know I only work ten to fifteen hours a week in the college, anyways, when school is in session. Um, I am a government employee, therefore I did get my full salary based on my contract. Uh, but I have other projects that I'm involved in here. Uh, with all my free time, I do the YouTube game. I also have this uh, travel company that I'm working with and developing some stuff with that. Some of you have seen some of the work I've done with that. Um, trying to build other things. I have my relationships with my hotels, brands, and and 
you know, when I travel and I stay in hotels, I often make uh, connections and arrangements for staying in other hotels so that I can do videos about them. And I try to be, and I tell them all, it's going to be an objective video, you know, when I stay at these places. So all of that has been disrupted. <clears throat> and uh, I'm a big fitness guy and my fitness uh, schedule has been disrupted. I can't go hiking. I can't go trail running. I can't go lift weights in the weight room. I can't go swimming. I can run around on the track and do yoga and push ups and sit ups, you know. But um, yeah, there's a, there's it's been highly disruptive to my my life and money. I mean, I finally got I got paid, you know, so but and I had money before that, of course, but my income is taking a hit out of this. So I'm not going out and buying new cameras. You know, I'm not going out and buying new Nike shoes, you know, that, and I've had, I've talked to my parents. I've talked to my parents a lot over the last couple of weeks and I've had to cancel some of my planned trips that I was taking. Um, I, and it's not just because of the travel restrictions. It's because financially it doesn't make sense right now. You know, I, I need to get my life back in order, <laughs> you know, uh, everyone here does. Um, and going home, I, I, I usually go home in July and spend a month with my family. Um, I've had to, I'm forecasting that that's not going to happen this year because number one, that's a very expensive trip for me to take, you know, and I do stay with my parents, but I do a lot of traveling while I am home. You know, I rent a car and I stay in hotels and I travel around America. Uh, but I'm I'm now aiming for September because it is about 40% cheaper to do it in September as opposed to July, if I can go at all. And then you add in the travel restrictions of 14-day quarantine here and 14-day quarantine when I come back into China. It doesn't make any sense for me to do that trip. So uh, that's been hard for me and my family. <clears throat> Uh, we talked about a lot of this already. Let's see here. It's at a, talked about the factories. They are open. They are not operating at full capacity. They have raw material shortages and no orders are coming in. A few orders. I don't say no orders, but orders are down. You know, mostly because the confidence is down. Mm. There have been no new infections in China in my city. Just two imported ones from local people who are visiting Europe. I have not spent any time with my friends. There's few amount of hours that I get out. Yeah, I, I run errands, you know. Um, so my good buddies and everything, we, we can't go for beer. You know, we can meet up for pizza or something, but it takes an awful lot of coordination to do that. And most of the time that people are out and about, they want to limit their exposure to um, to the world. So they just simply go to the supermarket. They might have a, a milk tea or something and then they just go back home. So we've been sharing a lot of watch this movie, watch, watch this new show from Netflix, you know, <laughs> a lot of that going on. Um, the malls are open when you walk down the, I have some video of it, but the malls are open and many of the retail stores are open, but there aren't any shoppers, you know, nobody's buying clothes. Nobody's again, People are getting a milk tea here and there, but no one's walking into Uniqlo and buying a new jacket. They, uh, nobody's buying, you know, high-end watches and high-end handbags. You know, they, so you walk down the the malls or the shopping center areas. You have all the the workers standing out front, you know, being very professional. And, you know, some of them are holding balloons and stuff, and they're waiting and you know, say, "Hey, you come on in. Look at this." And, Nobody ever comes in. So they, those poor folks that work in the retail section seem to be just standing there. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of shifting. We, uh, I tried to go get a, uh, a milk tea. That oh, was yesterday. I tried to go get a milk tea at one of my favorite places. And they were open. There's a little family-owned milk tea place. But they were not serving because they were deep cleaning everything and finally got new shipments of new foods or new product that they had to organize so they said we're we'll reopen in like five hours <laughs> so there's it's, it's a lot of craziness going on the cars are still falling in place here 
we talked about the xenophobia, which I'm scared of happening, but um, and a lot of YouTubers and a lot of foreigners are talking about the the growing or the potential of a growing xenophobia in China. I personally have not seen this at all. People continue to be very welcoming and friendly everywhere I go. Strangers, children, my friends, my colleagues. Um, it's it's been wonderful actually. Uh, talked about the blame game. I don't want to talk about that anymore. It's stupid. It's a waste of time. Uh, don't care what it's called. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any difference. Fear is still the number one issue when it comes to the virus. It's not the virus itself. It's the panic and the fear that will cause more disruptions to your life and more trouble in your life. It's why you cannot buy toilet paper. The virus didn't make the toilet paper disappear from Costco. It's the fear that did that. And I have always told you, don't freak out. You will still live. Even if you don't have toilet paper, you'll still live, people. Um, the big issue here in China is, uh, people don't have money. Um, people, a lot of people have lost their jobs and lost their businesses. Those who have kept their jobs and kept their businesses, payroll is slow to come. And, uh, if they do get paid, they're not going out and spending it. They're hoarding it. So consumer confidence is gone. It really is shocking. When you go to the mall, people are eating, you know, they go to the supermarket, they buy food, but uh, retail stores, phone shops, computer stores, these, these places are empty. There's nobody buying this stuff. Uh, a couple of stores I noticed, they opened for like a week, no business, so they just closed down. And I have a, my, my sister works at Disneyland and uh, in California, and they said, I asked, how, how's business at Disneyland? And uh, I, I didn't talk directly with my sister. I really should call her. But uh, my father told me through her that uh, business at Disneyland was completely empty. There was nobody going to Disneyland. So I thought, well, what a great time to visit Disneyland. No crowds. <laughs> it's probably safe. Disney does a really good job of, excuse me, Disney does a very good job of keeping things clean. But they probably closed it down because they're losing money. So it's better to earn no money than to lose money. So Disneyland closed down for a couple weeks. I really should call my sister. There's a lot going on here, guys. Hmm. Any watch... Come visit China after this crisis is over. If you're curious about China, why not see it with your own eyes? Welcome. You're right. Shadow of the Ninja. I, this is the first time I've seen that. Um, people are very curious about China. And a lot of people are saying, don't go to China. It's too dangerous. I say, look, if you have the means to do it, you have the time to do it, and you're willing to do the 14-day quarantine, everything, come to China. China is an amazing place, and you will never fully understand it. Just like me, when I first came here, I had a completely different idea of what it was. And I saw it with my own eyes and it flipped the script completely about my outlook here and what it's really like. Um, you have to experience it. You don't understand China until you see it and experience it with your own eyes. You don't understand the size and the scale of not just the cities and the big towers and the big residential blocks, but also the grand vistas and natures and how large everything is here. Um, we tend to see the world out of our own like little box and that box is our world and everything else is minuscule. So the more you go and see just how big everything really is um, and it makes your box, you know, a little bit bigger as well. Do it. Come to China if you can. Yeah. Visit the Buddhist temples. It's great. Um, the, the temples are closed. We tried to go to a temple yesterday. I took a little video of it. Um, and the temples are still closed here. So another example of things are definitely not back to normal here. According to the Western media, there's no religion allowed in China. How can you visit Buddhist temples? There's 
religion all over China. You know, this this idea that there's no religion in China is complete BS. Um, we have a there's a Catholic church right down the street from me. You know, there's you know Christianity is the number one growing religion here. You have Taoism, Buddhism. There's Muslims here. There's every religion you can think of here. Um, the if you want to be a party member, then you're technically supposed to be an atheist. And of course, because the schools are supposed to be atheists as well. So I'm allowed to be religious. I'm not, I'm not a religious man, but I'm allowed to be a religious man. I'm just not allowed to preach. So the religion everywhere, guys, this idea that it's banned here is completely bullshit. Recently, many Asians got harassed because they wear masks. I haven't heard of that. I've heard people saying that they're harassed. I haven't seen a single bit of evidence that that is happening. I've been a blonde girl, Blondie Channel. She made in China vegan food and visited Buddhist temples in China. She's good. Blondie in China or girl blonde, whatever. She's a fantastic Chinese channel. Very, very positive, happy. She doesn't get into politics and stuff. She just... She speaks incredible Chinese, and she has a really good knowledge. Her channel is amazing. Highly recommend her channel. It is true some Asians are buying guns and ammo. Yeah, just like America. If you're an American, buy guns and ammo. You know, I'm, I like, I like guns. Okay, I, I don't have a fetish for guns, but my family we have always have had guns, and I grew up shooting guns, and you know, I've been trained on guns. I was a Boy Scout. I was a troop. Um, and I believe in the right to own a gun in America for protection. Um, yeah. That's why I warned my brother about people who won't have paychecks for the next few weeks. People do stupid things when they panic. That's another thing. Yeah. Again, and it's not just the people, it's businesses. Politicians react differently than medical professionals. Medical professionals give advice. Politicians shut down the the world. Okay, so I think there was a quote. Um, it was Men in Black. You know, Tommy Lee Jones said, "You know, a person is smart. You are smart, but people are stupid and panicky." Uh, the worst thing will be not have enough treatment capacity. The virus got spread too quickly. That's why Wuhan nearly have so many deaths. It's one argument whether or not it's true. We can argue about that left and right. Hey, call your sister. Okay, Steve. I should call my sister. <clears throat> I have two sisters. One sister is on a boat right now on the East Coast. She's very safe. She's off, She's anchored off the East Coast on a boat. Not a cruise ship. She's with her. She's on her boat. Uh, in the U.S., so many people don't believe that the virus is really bad. It worries me because I know it's going to spread. Of course it's going to spread. It's going to spread. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Don't panic. Live your life. Take the precautions you need to protect. You, know, you don't have to understand everything. Chain. Just need to accept that the world is big enough for... Yes, great, great thing. Yes, one system is not better than the other. One one culture is not better than the other. They're just different. And understanding that is why I'm here. It's hard to be vegan to believe that. Uh, be vegan is the name, not to be vegan. Okay, you guys are having your own like little conversations on the side here. So let's see. Well, Italy has more than... Uh, I don't want to get into numbers. You know, you get in, oh, there's 17,000 this, this many people died. It's like... It's a rabbit hole. It changes every. It's, you're constantly refreshing the page to see which what's up. It's over it. Mm. I have face masks in my pockets. Kind of stupid since there is no way I don't need to wear them. If there are a lot of people around, I dare not wear them. Hmm. And if there aren't a lot of people around, like when I'm on the campus, I don't wear I don't wear a mask. But when I go out, I have to wear And I've been caught. I mean, I was getting out to go to the supermarket and walking in without my mask. And someone looked at me and said, ah, ah, ah. I went, oh, yeah, that's right. I had to go back and get it because you forget. Uh, 
All right, let's 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 stop going after people in my chat, or I'll just shut it down. This is really stupid, guys. Okay, what else did we talk about? Um, I talked about the containment, New Rochelle, New York, the containment zone. It's not really a containment zone. There's nobody policing. You're still free to leave and go about your business and go anywhere you want. That's kind of the American way of doing it. Uh, American health system talked about that. I don't trust the American health system. Uh, I think that this will be a good example of a push for Medicare for all. Uh, the health system in America is so bloody expensive. It's ridiculously expensive. Um, the doctors are some of the wealthiest people in the country, and insurance companies are some of the wealthiest ins- um, companies uh, in the country. And, you know, you can argue that doctors deserve to be paid well. You know, they, they are very, very smart people, and they deserve to be compensated for their time. And I don't believe that anyone has a right to another person's services. You know, so this idea that, Health care should be a human right. Um, I, I don't really buy into that. Uh, I think it's a service. Well, not who pays for it and how it's paid for is what the argument is. Um, and I think doctors should be compensated well because they do do an awful lot of education, a lot of hard work to be in the position that they are. But I don't understand why insurance companies have private jets. You can make... Health insurance nonprofit. See what would happen. Health insurance. There's different kinds of insurance companies. You know, car insurance companies, home insurance companies. These are financial companies. What do they? What do you think they do with that money that you send them every month? They sit on it. No, they invest it and earn more money and they leverage it. There are financial institutions, for-profit financial institutions, taking money out of a healthcare system that deals with life and death. So I don't agree with for-profit health insurance companies. The American, oh, uh, the stock market. We can talk about that. The stock market has been crashing. Again, that's panic, fear that's doing that. It's not the virus doing that. It is people's reaction. And when you watch the news and you watch leaders, including our president and what he says, that has that means something. That has an effect. And the stock market is not Main Street. The stock market is a great barometer for economic vitality. But remember, what is the true driver of economic activity is the velocity of money. You know, if you hold on to money and don't do anything with it, that's not stimulating. To stimulate the economy, you have to spend money. And then when you spend money here, those people take that dollar and spend it over there. And then those people take that dollar and spend it over here. How often that dollar is exchanged for a good or service within the community, that is called the velocity of money. And if you have high velocity of money, you have high growth and good, strong economics. That is not happening here in China. It's not happening in America. Things are shutting down there. This is going to be more detrimental and more dangerous to the world than the virus could ever be. I've said that that from the very beginning. The health and vitality of an economy has a direct relationship to the health and the vitality of its people. It's been shown time and time and time again. That's why poor countries have low life expectancies. And advanced countries with, you know, advanced economies have high life expectancies. expectancies. Uh, Let's go back here. Stop blaming game CCP agents. No one is interested. What insurance do you get as a foreigner in China? Great answer. Great question. Um, I do have health insurance uh, from the college, it's part of my compensation package. It's renewed once per year. 
Uh, it's very affordable. I pay no nothing out of pocket for the insurance itself. The college pays all the premiums. Uh, and it's it's basically if I am hospitalized or if I die, then I get money to cover it. When I had my shoulder fixed um, last year, you know, I had a bad shoulder. I had to get an MRI and I had to get treatment for it. Um, I paid everything out of pocket first, which was a couple thousand RMB, no more than what I can't remember the exact amount, but it was less than $400 for two months worth of treatment, MRI, consultations, everything, medicines. It was really, really cheap to pay for it out of pocket. And in fact, I, I spent more time getting documentation and, you know, you know, write-ups from the doctor and everything notarized and get that little red stamp on everything and dealing with the insurance company here uh, to get reimbursement. And they reimbursed me something like 30% of the total cost. It wasn't worth it. <laughs> it, it. The insurance that I have, and there's many different levels. The insurance I have is mostly for, you know, if I get in a car accident or if I'm in the hospital for a long, long period of time, this will help cover those costs. For something like just going to the hospital because I have a fever or something, it's actually much easier just to pay out of pocket. It's so cheap. You know, um, dental work, I have. I don't have dental insurance. I get all my dental work done. I just pay cash because it is so much cheaper just to pay cash. I had a root canal. I had the uh, surgery on my, you know, extraction um, on my molar that cracked. You know, I did a video about that. All of that was just cheaper to pay cash than it would be to buy insurance and then have the insurance and deal with the insurance company and all this kind of crap. It's just easier to do. And, and I got really good treatment and it was much cheaper. So that's that's how I do it here. The current CDC structure is no longer able to deal with past patient infectious diseases. Personally, I think America's CDC should be reformed. Maybe there's an argument for that. CDC is federal, but you know, America people forget that America is very segregated in its powers, anyways. You know, you got to look at America as really 50 separate countries you know because each country has their own leader their own set of laws their own military or each state right and so you got to look at each in their own health department so each state is responsible for their own people and the, the confusion comes because people cross borders all the time and so that's why you have the federal uh government uh, how it's structured I don't know enough about it, but there's argument for it, I guess. We have free tests now, if you can get them. What's your thought on press? Trump, good leader? No, I don't think he's a good leader. I've never liked Trump. Even before, when I worked in real estate, I read all of Trump's books, you know, and, you know, in the real estate community, everyone looked at him saying, okay, he's a ruthless real estate guy. But we're all working in real estate to make money. So how can we make money? How can we learn from this guy? But even then, we all kind of thought he was a loon. And no one took him seriously when he ran for president. This is in the real estate community. And um, I think he's a terrible president. When I was born, my mother said it cost less than $100 for a week's stay. And my last daughter, $8,000, about 24 hours a day. It's insane. John, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, Winston, you guys know I don't agree with everything Winston says. Uh, but he made a comment that made sense to me. When his daughter was born in America, he has health insurance in America. And he pays an awful lot for premiums or family. But... The price for all of those premiums that he spent for the year and then some was like more than what he would spend for the birth of his, of his child if he just paid cash out of pocket. So <laughs> there's, there's something wrong with that. In your opinion, do you think Lick down helps contain the virus. <laughs> you mean lockdown, Lisa? I'm sorry. Uh, yes, I do believe. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Uh, lockdown does 
help contain the virus. You know, the difference is being in China, they actually lock you down. You are not allowed to leave. You are not allowed to go here. You cannot open your business. You know, that's, and people comply. They said, yes, we will happily be locked down and we won't open our business. We're in this together. Okay. And that's a collectivist society that China is. America is much different. I can't imagine them telling Americans to stay in your home. If you go out on the street, you will be arrested. Or <laughs> you know, if you try to open your business, you'll be arrested. I can't imagine that ever happening. That's again, but I can't I didn't imagine them shutting down the NBA or baseball. That was shock news to me. Red Star Stamp is a trip in China. Everything, yeah, that that red stamp on everything. There is no vaccine, can't be cured. You have to wear face masks and lock down or quarantine. There's no vaccine or cure for HIV either. And many, many, many other things. There are treatments. Trump's substance over style. Freedom of, yeah, freedom or death you choose. That's the American way, though. Freedom or death. Many people die for that freedom. Personal freedom. Most prior presidents spoke well, but never executed what they said. Uh, that's politics. I like politics, but I'm not interested in talking about it today. I've already talked about it enough today, I think. Uh Talking about Obama. I liked Obama. He was stability. How do you pers how do personal income tax rates in China compare to US or Europe? Thank you, Steve. Great question. I like questions like this. Um, <clears throat> I did a, a video on tax rates and the in individual income tax here in China and how it's changed. I don't know about Europe. I've never lived in Europe or paid taxes in Europe. My understanding is Europe's high. I think American taxes are high, but that's the cost that you pay to live in paradise. If you want to live in California, California <clears throat> state taxes are you know really, really high. And you have fees and taxes on your phone bill and your gas and sales tax, and you just tax to hell. But California is a wonderful place to live. So it's price you pay to live in paradise. Now, I'm a South Dakota resident, and a lot of people say, why would you live in South Dakota? Well, I have friends in South Dakota. I love South Dakota. I've been there. I lived there when I was stationed there for a couple of years. I think it's beautiful. I love the wide open spaces. I love the down to earth people there. I love the buffalo hamburgers. You know, um, it's it's my kind of place. And there's no state income tax there. And registration fees for your car and stuff are very low. Property taxes are very low. Um, so all throughout America, the tax rates are different. And it also depends on how you earn your money. Uh, here in China, uh, tax rates are exceedingly low. And you pay your property tax when you buy your house. It's not an ongoing thing. Some, I've heard that when you rent an apartment, you have to pay property taxes on the rent. I don't know if that's the case. I've never had to do that. So I, I've heard some people have to do that. I don't know what that's all about. I've never had to do that in the apartments I've rented here. They have said that they would place police outside people's house if they had to. Heard that today from New York. Really? That makes no sense. All sports shut down, even PGA. Yeah, I'm shocked by the sports shutting down. How is the area where you live in? Is it coming back online, work, factories, life, BAU? Well, I don't know, BAU, Rex, what's BAU? Uh, it's slowly coming back. I've been talking about the whole live stream, how restaurants are open, but few people. The shops are open, but no customers. The factories are open, but they're struggling, you know, they're not a capacity. Uh, raw materials are short supply and orders are very, very low. So there's a lot of uncertainty out there. 
payrolls are being processed uh, for those who still have a job because there's been a lot of unemployment now. Um, and people are hiring. You know, there's, there's companies out there that are looking to hire. So it's not like there are no jobs to be found, but it's really just upset the status quo. So people can go out and get a job. But if they get paid, they're not spending the money. You know, like me, I got paid, but I'm not spending my money. I'm keeping it for when I am able to travel again and when I am able to go to the movies again and stay in my hotels that I love to stay in and do videos about. Uh, no state income tax, South Dakota. Yes, no state income tax. That's why I'm a resident there. Do you pay federal tax for your income in China? Uh, no, because my income is low. Uh, when you make money overseas, you can claim the foreign income exclusion, which last year was well over a hundred grand. I don't make a hundred grand a year in U.S. dollars, so. I, when I file my income tax, I state how much I earn, and then I file, I can't remember the, it's like 8855, I can't remember the actual form number, it's 88 something, I can't remember the form, but it's the foreign income exclusion form, and that lowers your taxable, your adjusted gross income, and taxable income down to zero, so you are not subject. Now, depending on what state you live in, um, some states do tax your foreign income and the, the, the federal income, the federal income tax, the federal <laughs> income tax exclusion is well over a hundred thousand dollars of salaried income, but the, uh, states all have their own rules. So if you live in California, California wants you to pay, uh, taxes on the income that you make overseas. There's no, uh, exclusion. That's why I'm a South Dakota resident. And yes, uh, I don't have a California driver's license. I have a South Dakota driver's license. I have an address in South Dakota. It is my home. And when I, if I ever leave China or Asia and come home, I will live in South Dakota because as an old man, I want that serenity of the Black Hills. South Dakota being there. China is weird. You buy a place, you don't own the land. That's true. You don't own the land. You buy, when you buy a house, you're buying essentially a 99 year lease. The land is all owned by the government. The government owns everything. That's why they're able to do incredibly huge infrastructure projects like the high speed rail so fast. They just come in and said, well, this is our land. You know, here's some money and build a high speed rail in your backyard. And when you ride the high-speed rail here in Zhongshan going up to Guangzhou, it's all elevated, the whole, the whole line, completely elevated. So you have these pylons that go down um, across fields, across um, neighborhoods, and uh, you see some pylons go directly into the ceilings of factories and warehouses. They're literally right through the ceiling you know, of a factory or a warehouse, a corrugated steel roof. It's fascinating to see, and that's how they're able to do such huge infrastructure projects so efficiently and so quickly and so cost efficiently. It's because they own the land. They can do it. But real estate prices have gone up because there are very few investment vehicles for Chinese people to invest money in. You can invest in a factory, in a business. You can invest in the Chinese stocks. Um, but... That's highly speculative, and real estate seen as a very um, safe place to invest right now. So that's why you see the so-called housing bubble that's here. I mean, I think that's the housing situation in China really depends on where you live. If you invest in some startup, you know, city that's you know three hours drive from a city center, and you've got these high rises, and you buy an apartment there you know, trying to speculate on it. No, you're not going to live there. No one's going to live there. There's no jobs there. There's no people there. There's no retail. There's no restaurants. That's, that's, and you wouldn't even do that in America. There are neighborhoods all throughout America that are like that. The people, the developers come in, they build them, they try to sell them and people lose their shirts because there's no jobs there. But if you're buying in a city center where people actually live or in the path of progress, 
then you're going to do just fine. There's no bubble there as the economy grows and continues to get strong in the long run. There's a hiccup right now, but in the long run, the economy here is very resilient and do just fine. Then you're going to be fine with your, that's your bubble. The bubble is in the outskirts, you know, and, and opportunistic developers who, you know, build super, super cheap and uh, sell it to unsuspecting investors. But that's not a Chinese thing. That is a <laughs> real estate thing that happens in every country in the world. You know, it, I was a real estate guy back in America. It happens in America, all throughout California, Arizona, Nevada, everywhere. Uh, at least is for 70 years, not 90. I don't remember. I thought it was 99 years. Could be so. I can't remember the actual years. Eminent domain on steroids. It is complete eminent domain <laughs> is what it is. And ownership is the same in London. You buy a property for some years. You need to pay repay when period is over, and it's very expensive. I don't know. I've never. I've actually never been to England. Never been to London, so I don't know. It'd be interesting. I'd love to go. I'm an English teacher, so I my my income is not conducive for a vacation in London. Any compensation is much better than Americans' eminent domain. There's debate about that. You know. The compensation. Some people say it's good. Some people say it's not. It depends on where it is. And it also depends, is the government giving you compensation or is a developer giving you compensation? Because there are an awful lot of farmers out there driving Ferraris in China because they're the land that they own the lease on is worth so much. So they sell the land uh, to... There's also, I've heard these stories too, like they'll have like a, a community where the government wants to come in and put some kind of a prison or a, you know, a, a state owned enterprise of some kind. And so they pay the local community a lot of money. So you have this traditionally low income community, you know, houses and apartment buildings and farms and a few small factories. And all of a sudden they're getting huge balloon payments uh, for the people who live in that community. If you live outside that community or just outside the community, you won't get anything. Do you think the U.S. and China can be friends again? What about those American hawks in D.C.? Because America's land is cheap. Some places. California is not cheap. <laughs> but, yeah, the Midwest. I would love to just buy land in all throughout the Midwest, man. Just buy huge chunks of land. But then you have to – there's ongoing costs to that. As far as America and China being friends, we are already friends. China and America are friends. You have people on the fringes who like to shout at one another. You know, I have arguments with my friends. I had an argument with my friend last week, you know, but we're still friends. You know, husbands and wives argue all the time, but, you know, they're still married. They still love each other. China and America are need, are some symbiotic. You know, we're going to continue to fight and argue about little things and blame games and, you know, how dare you park the car there? You <laughs> Come on. But in the long run, I think people are smart enough to know that China and America and the world need solidarity, especially during this time. So when I see a Chinese official go on Twitter and blame America, and he didn't really blame America, but he was he – was he was venting his frustrations. Or I see my president or any kind of senator or congressman out there trying to blame China. You know, I just dismiss it as stupid because the people are what make this friendship happen. Again, here on the ground, I'm an American. Everyone knows where I'm from. You know, they treat me with kindness and respect, and I treat them with kindness and respect. And that's how the world goes around. It doesn't, the, the world is not defined by the, two-minute clip you see on CNN. I used to see $2,000 for one acre. My eyes popped out in disbelief. Yeah. There are communities in America where you can go and get free land if you choose to live there. There's one community in Nebraska that if you go and you live there and spend time there, it's like two hours away from 
it was in Nebraska. It was either Nebraska or Kansas. John, you might know Nebraska or Kansas, where you go there and you you live there, and they will repay your your student loans for living there. You know, these are the small communities. So America is huge too. We can be paid to claim land in Alaska. Yeah, I. That's uh, Alaska is a great um, example of that uh, universal basic income. Uh, the the Pete Buttigieg thing, which no, no, I'm sorry, that wasn't Pete Buttigieg. That was uh, Andrew Young. Andrew Young. Uh, I thought it was a very interesting idea. I looked into it and I thought it was very interesting. And I have friends of mine from the service who are. Alaskan residents, and they had to go back to Alaska, you know, on vacation, spend time with their families, and pick up their paycheck for being an Alaskan citizen. And many service members would want to be stationed in the bases throughout Alaska because then they can claim Alaskan citizenship and be part of that program. <laughs> so. Yes, many areas of Kansas, nothing but open land. I love open land. When you drive on Interstate 40 across the desert and then continue on past Colorado into the Plain States, it's just on an interstate, I think Interstate 80 from Colorado uh, going, uh, going east is flat and just land and land and land. And that could all be yours, man. Surveillance by the big brother. What are your thoughts? It's part of life now. I mean, I don't, when it, when you talk about surveillance, I think people think that there's somebody at a computer watching every move that you do, following and tracking you on a map and then reporting it. He's, he's going into the Seven Eleven now, you know, and that's not the case. This phone is an iPhone. It is being tracked by the Chinese government. Uh, the data collection somewhere. Uh, my car has a license plate number that is attached to my passport, my work permit, my tax records, everything. And the mat is photographed, you know, 30 times when I'm driving around the city. And all that information and data is stored somewhere. That's only going to be used if I'm, you know, like a murder suspect or something, you know, there's, there's no reason I'm a law abiding citizen. I'm, you know, I don't do crazy stuff. So, uh, and in this case, it has actually helped the authorities with the containment of the virus. I, if you saw my video, when I went to the ecological park, I went through a roadblock and I had to scan a QR code. And what it did is it showed the police, all the parts of the city that my phone has been in and the other cities I've been in, they could look at that and say, okay, this person hasn't been to Hubei. He's free to go. Yeah. That has greatly helped. Uh, I heard stories from other foreigners here who, when they came back into Guangdong, they had to show their purchase history through Alipay or WeChat pay. And that showed where they had been because they had bought a, you know, a bottled water at a 7-Eleven in this district of Guangzhou. Yeah. So I'm fine with that. I mean, and when you walk around America, you expect a certain amount of anonymity. I can never say that word right. You know what I mean. And I, I really enjoy that when you walk down the street. No one gives you're just an average Joe Schmo when you're there. So if cameras are watching me here in China or they're tracking my data, that's par for the course. It's part of living here. You know, I stick out like a sore thumb. So everywhere I go, people are watching me and looking at me and wondering what I'm doing, especially when I film my videos, I get crowds just staring and wondering, what is he doing? You know, I, it's part of life. So there's no, that, that, that's what, another reason why I've actually loved living on the campus over the last couple of weeks because I'm completely free. <laughs> there are cameras all over the campus and security can watch me go about my business all they want. It's probably the only thing they have to do is, Oh, psh, you know, Paul's playing basketball again. Psh, he's taking out the trash and feeding the cats. <laughs> uh.
No, nah, they just look for keywords that hit off multiple times. That's true. There's certain keywords that'll be flagged, but those keywords are entered in millions of times. You know, again, there's there's algorithms in there. You know, it's not somebody sitting behind a computer looking at this stuff. Have they given you timeline for back to normal life? They haven't. I've been asking, you know, what's the word on school and the classes? When am I going to go back to work? Nobody can give me a de definitive answer. It's all still up in the air and an ongoing pro process. Um, the answer I've been told is a long time. <laughs> Channel 4 News, they talked about the QR code a couple days ago. Really? Interesting. I'll have to look into that. You're a CIA spy. <laughs> you know, the only people who have accused me of being a CIA spy are other Americans in America. <laughs> I would make the worst CIA spy possible. I, again, I stick out like a sore thumb, you know. CIA spies blend in. I don't blend in in China. <laughs> they consider that QR code as a violation of human rights. Again, I think that's more, Michael, that's more of a an example of the different cultures. Here in China, it's fine. Everyone likes it. You know, I've talked about this before. I asked my students, do you go hiking? And they say, no, I don't go hiking because it's too dangerous. There are no cameras to watch me. So it's not better or worse, and people aren't brainwashed. It's just how the culture is here. And it's much different in America than it is in any other part of the world. So in America, you would see that as Big Brother watching you. Oh, my God, this is terrible. And I get that. I would be the same way. But when you live in China, it's normal. It's fine. You know, I don't care. I don't care if the government sees that I, you know, bought a hamburger today. Come on. Doesn't mean. Uh, now, not that powerful. One female was caught recently because of the coronavirus crisis. She and her partners robbed and killed multiple people. She had been living in one of the busy cities for 20 years. People, China's very big. And if you want to find one person, if you're in Guangzhou, which is what, 15 million people, maybe 20 million people by now, if you add Foshan, you know, the if you're looking for one person in Guangzhou, then what you're doing is you're looking for a needle in a stack of needles. So it's not that easy, but it does help help law enforcement. I think you'd need you'd need to be ABC to be CIA in China. <laughs> yeah, you talk like a CIA spy, walk like a CIA spy, and you are a CIA. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, get me in trouble. Uh, in USA nowadays, there are traffic cams everywhere. There are traffic cams everywhere but they're not enforcement. The traffic cams here actually take your picture. And there's no traffic uh, police. If you drive down the street, the traffic police aren't waiting and then pull you over for speeding. That doesn't happen here. Uh, it's purely the camera system. And the cameras are, they're spaced out. You have average speed cameras. So if you enter one camera at 80 kilometers, uh, kilometers per hour, and then five kilometers down the road, it takes your picture again. It can measure your average speed. And if you're over the speed limit, they'll send you a bill, a ticket, you know, and things like that. So that's how they monitor traffic here. They have red light cameras everywhere, which I know they have in America too. But they don't have people who chase you. <sighs> I'm done talking about politics. Most countries spy on you. China's being open about it. <laughs> it's a good point. Yeah. I mean, even America spies on you. <laughs> they just try to hide it. Can't beat the cams in London. I really need to go to London, it looks like. Fake news kills the debate. Very easy to make Trump look bad without the media resorting to lie. I'm over that. You guys know my opinion on that. This is this argument about fake news, Trump lying, and media distorting and everything. That's such a Thanksgiving family debate. I'm completely over it. Everyone knows, you know, what's going on and doesn't need to be rehashed. 
good old daily live car chase in LA. You know, I, I was watching uh, Huel Hauser did a, a thing on the helicopters in Los Angeles and how they cover live chases and stuff. And is is an element of life in LA that I do miss is seeing those traffic. Re- I miss the traffic reports. I miss going from point A to point B and trying to navigate through the field reports and get the best way there. I do miss that. These are the days before they had Waze app and everything. Eating in restaurants is allowed now. And yes, it is. So they've allowed restaurants to open up. I have my friend, the pizzeria here. Uh, he's being allowed to open up, but he's delaying it for safety reasons. He wants to make sure everything is clean. So he'll open up soon, hopefully. Uh, you have to have a certain amount of space. So every other table is empty. So if you go to dinner with a couple of friends and you can sit at the same rest uh, table, but then there's an empty table and then you eat at that one. Again, about one third of the restaurants are open and operating and it's great. I was able to get a cup of coffee at my coffee shop, which was great. So happy that bars are still closed. KTVs are closed. Entertainment venues are closed. Gyms are closed. Movies are closed. I have a long, long way to go. So one third of the restaurants are open. One third of the restaurants are open, but still only content doing takeout. Part of that is for deep cleaning purposes. They don't meet the health standards to do dine-in services, or they don't have the staffing available. The other third are still black, shut off, completely closed, and haven't reopened and will not reopen. Mm. The restaurants opened last week in the city. Changzhou, Jiangsu. Great to hear. The iHeart app even listen to KFI when in China. Yeah, and then if you're going to listen to conservative talk radio, you got to listen to liberal talk radio and make up your own mind because the truth is in between. I know someone who got sick weeks before anyone else and they announced they had the COVID virus in the US. We are probably screwed. Don't say that. I don't think you're screwed. I think you're going to be just fine. Yes, it's going to grow. People are going to get sick. It's life, guys. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. It's always been my don't overreact, but don't underreact. In cases people got infected. Yeah. These individual anecdotal stories, I see them too all the time. Okay, with all that being said, be excellent to one another. I've been online for quite a while, guys. So between this part, part one and part two, uh, it's almost two hours. I think you can hear my, I'm getting tired of talking. But uh, I thank you everyone, thank you everyone for joining me. These, um, these live streams are very cathartic for me, you know, being in isolation and not having any classes to teach. Um, I will talk about politics occasionally. I think it's overblown. I don't like the blame game. I don't like anecdotal stories because they don't give a full picture. I don't like panicking. Um, I want everyone to just take care of themselves, take care of their family, be smart. If you're going to try, I don't say don't travel, but if you're going to travel, be smart about it, you know? Um, and be aware. Be aware. So, <clears throat> as Winston says, stay awesome. Yeah, said that a long time. Go out and have some fun. I'm going to go. Oh, uh, before I leave, I'll tell you. Uh, we'll go. There's a way of traveling happy. There's a way of traveling and doing it smart. And people just need to be smart. I think 14 day quarantine is fine. If you're coming from high risk places, I think that's smart. Uh, if cases do get in, then you just do targeted surgical cleanups and, and quarantines as a result of that and, and not close down an entire country. Only classes online. By the way, okay, the Matt, you said my kids in Minnesota and Wisconsin University only have classes online now. The classes online now are not effective. The the word from the from not just the teachers but also the students is that they're not effective ways of learning 
for the most part. There are many students out there that are very studious and they get the job done. But just like if anyone has worked from home, you have to have a certain disposition, you know, a certain discipline in order to make that work. So the online classes are a temporary plug with, with bubble gum. It's not fixing the hole in the boat. So the that's all it is. I refuse to work. I don't want to work online. I hate teaching online. I, I think it's so impersonal and doesn't do anything for me or the student. So that's just not for me. Yes, the hotel's prices are extremely low. But if I go to Hong Kong and try to stay in a five-star hotel for 50 bucks a night, I first have to do a 14-day quarantine. So here in Zhongshan, I am planning uh, to do a video on a the La, on the La Meridian in Ganko, which is a five-star hotel. Occupancy is very low there. So they gave me a really great price, and I know the sales manager. So I'm going to have a wonderful time there. I'm going to do a video on it. And it's a beautiful design, very, very modern. Uh, one of the newest five stars here in the city. Uh, the only reason why it's not better, the Hilton is older, but the Hilton has a better location, more established uh, area in the heart of the town. Ganko is kind of in the outskirts. Um, there's a Westin now that opened up in Gujin, which I'm going to have to go look at. I think it's a little overpriced, the Westin. I don't know anybody. I That's not true. I do know somebody who works there, but not in a position to help me out. Uh, but they don't have the same amenities of a five-star hotel. It's, it's just uh, the location there is for business travelers. So the La Meridian is going to be an exciting hotel for me. And I'm also looking at um, doing some traveling within Guangdong before classes do start. Uh, going up to Guangzhou and going to some hot springs. There's a new indoor ski resort, which is right next to an indoor water resort. I'm hoping to go check that out. That's in near the Bayun Airport in Guangzhou. So lots of things coming up. It's just And tomorrow I'm going to a movie studio. Many years ago, I went to this movie studio, walked around with my phone. It was very shaky. Nobody ever watched it. It's got like 100 views on it. But there is a movie studio with a back lot here in Zhongshan that I'm going to go to tomorrow and um, get a tour. That's going to be really, really exciting for me. They have um, uh, ancient Tokyo, ancient Guangzhou. They have temples. They have uh, medieval, uh, like European medieval uh, fortress with a church. They have uh, London streets and old West American streets and a couple of other small little backlot areas that I'm going to go walk around. So I'll get to go to like five different countries in one afternoon. I'm very excited about that. Hmm. Problem is she has to move out, but she refuses to move back. Hmm. Sorry to hear that, dude. Can you visit your girlfriend now? Yes, I can. Uh, I can go to my, she, her community is wide open. I can drive in, drive out wide open. Uh, but I don't because I'm still on restrictions. So I'm only allowed off every couple of days for a couple of hours. And I need that time to go to the park, to live a life, to go shopping for food. You know, so, you know, like tomorrow we'll go to the park. Please uh, keep update. Uh, next video. Yeah, I will. Thank you, everyone. I got to go. My voice is killing me, guys. <laughs> I ran out of hot water. So I'm going to go put on a movie today. I got old Jackie Chan movies from the 80s to watch today. So thank you all very much. Wonderful chatting with everybody. Be excellent to one another. Stay safe, and we'll see you next weekend. Okay, Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>